Uh, the uh, workshop for this morning on creating videos using Office Mix. Um, I'd like to introduce um, Stanley Chang from Howard College. Yeah, from yeah. Howard College. Yeah, Howard College. Yeah. yeah. Um, who's going to take the um, presentation across today? So I guess we'll give them a little bit of welcome. Uh, hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Stanley. Uh, I try to turn on heater, but turn out there's no heater, so. I'll try to motivate you guys into making videos. Um, so basically, I've been learning about Office Mix for quite some time. Uh, I started thing, doing, using Office Mix at the, end, at the start of the summer holiday. And I'm just going to give you guys a brief introduction to it. Um, I'm going to take you guys into Office Mix and show you guys a bit of what you can do with Office, Office Mix. And feel free to put your hands up and ask any questions. Um, I'm still learning about Office Mix, but I think I know m about most of it. Uh, so, a little bit about me. So, my name is Stanley. I'm a second year teacher at Howard College. I teach biology. Uh, and things I'm good at, I'm pretty good at PowerPoint. I'm pretty good at the program called Prezi, if you guys ever use Prezi. Uh, and anything to do with ICT. So, anything to do with technology and it's got to do with teaching, I, I probably play around with it. Um, so I thought I'd add a little fun fact. Uh, students say I look kind of like Kim Jong-un, um, or the guy, the, the side guy, I'm my size uncle apparently. Um, or the boy from the up, I still don't know his name, but um, apparently there's a resemblance of me and him, maybe when I was younger. Anyway, um, so I'm going to start off as like talking about my journey and why did I start making videos from Office Mix. And uh, the reason for that is that last year was my first year. I receive a lot of compliments and I, you know, there's a lot of things I need to improve on as a teacher. Uh, one of the good things I received for my year 12 was this thank you card and I might just turn down the light a bit so you guys might be able to see it properly. Um, so I received this thank you card for my year 12 and I was really happy but at the same time I was scared and frightened by some things that I, I noticed. The first thing was that when did they take these photos? Because yeah. obviously it was during the class time and I obviously was focused on my teaching and I didn't know they would just go take my pictures of me. Uh, the second one is how do I put out so many facial expressions? I, I didn't know that I have so many facial expressions. Uh, I guess I teach with my body language and my facial expressions, which is, I think it's good and they really enjoyed it. But the last thing that was that really worries me is why am I always talking? in front of them. Like, if you look at the pictures and the ones I circle, it's always me in the front teaching about biology, like mitosis, meiosis. Um, I'll be wiggle around with the noodles with mitosis dance and stuff like that, but it's always me doing the talking. And this kind of gave me a, a bit of reflection. And this is a little rubrics, uh, rubrics I learned from Teachers College. In fact, I think it's not only Hunger College. Um, it's you have this little grid, right? And you can actually say that, look, I'm going to spend a bit of time in my class time to teach about, you know, settling down, do now and you know do the role and I'll probably teach a, you know a, spend a bit of time teach the content and I will move on to for example a hands-on activity experiments or any sort of student collaboration and at the end of the lesson I will just have this formative assessment either um, if you guys ever use Kahoot or any sort of like you know uh, reflection cards or things like that there'll be a little summary right but after last year I realized that most of the time this is my classroom, for my year 12s especially. I actually spend a lot of time teaching them the content. I just keep on adding stuff on top of each other, on top of on top of top. And at the very end, I might have a bit of time for hands-on activity, or I might just summarize the whole thing. So it was basically me, me lecturing them. And therefore, oh, and also another thing for my um, observing teachers that, that observed me from last year and this year as well. This is what she wrote for me. She says, how exhausted do you get? Yes, I have asked you before, can you sustain the big voice and energy uh, levels with the full load in 2016? What will you do differently? Because every time after the class, you just, she'll, she'll be like, wow, you got so much energy, but are you, are you ready for the next class? I'll be like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, she's, she's worried about me, you know, wondering whether I have that enough energy when I have full loads. Uh, so that's one of the teacher observations. So what I really want to do is, well, and there's a little diagram to show you. I want to minimize the lecturing side of things. I don't want to be it's just me standing in front talking to the students and they don't get on with their hands-on activities or, or experiments. So my goals after learning about this were uh, reduce teaching time, uh, change the classroom from teacher-centric to student-centric, so bring this learning back to the students, 
uh, so bring the learning back to students and minimize the energy expenditure but still bring the elements of fun because I want my class to always be fun. Science is about fun, it's not about just listen to me talking even though I try to add a lot of emphasis in the you know, in my stories, for example. Uh, but really, the important part is that I want to find a way to minimize lecturing, but also deliver teacher content in a fun and dynamic way. So I went to my mentor, which is the HOD of um, Howard College, uh, Steve Martin, and I said, is there a way, is there a, an easy application I can use to create a video? Because I don't really have that much time to go into the, the video editing or, you know, try to spend money on, on, on the project. I mean, school will definitely fund it, but I mean, I just want an easy way to do it, and I'm really good with PowerPoint, and he introduces me to Office Mix. Um, so Office Mix is, is still a beta from the Microsoft. It is still um, being developed, and there's a lot of updates going on at the moment, but it's a free add-on for Microsoft PowerPoint 2013. It does not work if you have Office 2010. Um, if it's 2010, it will not add, you cannot add this add-on to it. Oh, thank you very much, yep, um, yep. And the good thing about Office Mix, and I'll show you guys later on, is that it allows you guys to easily create and share interactive videos. And I'll talk more about what does it mean by interactive videos uh, through the cloud, okay? And the add-on enables you guys to um, add voice, uh, videos, and digital ink to existing PowerPoint. So, if you have an existing PowerPoint that you made last year, and you have Office 2000, you have PowerPoint 2013, and you have Office Mix, you can add on your voice to your existing PowerPoint. It doesn't have to be something that's brand new that you created just now. It can be something that is two years, three years ago. As long that you can convert that to a 2013 format, I think the PPTX is the, 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 the format, you can just add voice, ink, or anything to it, okay? So, uh, oh, and lastly, it also allows users to include interactive quizzes, polls, and apps. And I use, uh, for one of my mix, I add quizzes, um, but I'll show you guys how it works. Um, but I just want to briefly talk about how do you deliver a video to classroom. So uh, there's the one that's called a flip classroom strategy, which is um, students gain necessary teaching content. So what you do is you give the video beforehand, before your lesson, and you tell them, hey, go watch it. And when you come in, you can ask me any questions or we can just get on with the hands-on activity. Um, the good thing about Flip Classroom is that you increase the opportunity for teacher-student interactions. It's no longer me spending 20 minutes in my class time teaching you guys, it's more of me going around and say, hey, what do you think of the video? And then they will give you feedback, and you can, they say, oh, I don't really know about this part, can you explain it again? And I might be able to spend that class time to teach, you know, to, to develop their understanding of a particular content or potentially it might be an instruction thing for like experiments, and I'll show you guys later on. Um, I made Ooblet. Yes, hi. Um, where do they access these videos from? Like, do you have a... Good questions. Yes, um, I will show you a place on Office Mix uh, on Office Mix where you can actually show the videos. Um, I start off by showing them with YouTube. So I actually made a video, I converted it into YouTube, and I put it onto YouTube. And then now. Um, you might not see my video, videos because I, I make it private, so I just share my link. I'm, kind of, I'm still kind of shy about my videos. I, I still don't think they're very good, but I just make it unlisted. So basically, I just give the link to a student and go, hey, have a look. And, and our school have a little, um, we could call it Schoology. It's like a delivery system, so they can just go onto Schoology, and they can go to my folder, and I will upload my video there. Hi. How do you make sure that you the videos for the flip classroom? Because I tried that. Personally, I use Flip Classroom once, because that's the problems I had. Um, I now have realized there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, with, um, well, this is based on school, but our school has a little delivery, like a digital content delivery system called Schoology. So it's like a website that's really similar to Edmodo or like, like Facebook. And basically what I do is that I can actually put my videos onto Schoology and I can set it as a task. So each student has to actually watch it in order to complete the task, and then therefore I can monitor whether they watch it or not. But having said that, it is still then up to the student to decide whether they're going to do it or not. So they can probably come in and say, no, I haven't watched it. So uh, flip classroom, I mean, if you can get into the habit, if you can get your students into a routine, I think they will work great. But for some class, like some of my class, I, I just don't think they will get into that routine. Like they just, they're like, oh, I forgot. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, but then, I, therefore, I use another uh, strategy, so I'll show you guys really quickly. 
Um, but basically, students are able to ask relevant questions. Uh, they are associated with their learning from the video. So whatever they learn from the video, they can come in, and if they, they're confused with something, they can ask you about it. Um, I think we've got a bit of time. So I'll show you guys, instead of me explaining, I'll show you guys quickly what Flip Classroom looks like. Uh, uh, can I ask something first? Yes. When you get them to ask uh, to watch the video, Yes. Do you give them like sets of questions for them to answer after they've watched the video? E yep, so for Office Mix, you can actually add quiz to it. So I actually set quiz for them to do at the end of the video. Um, but you, uh, I, I, n I don't have like a paper version of like you know handouts to so give it, it to them. So it goes with the. It goes video. with the offer mix, but you obviously can add, do a paper handout like if you want to as like a part of the homework. Like, hey, watch this video before tomorrow's lesson and answer these questions and see whether you know. And then they can come in with the answers and you can check. So yes. it's very similar to the uh, click view. Click videos. Uh, click videos. Where they have, although they also have. You can access the questions online, but you can also print them. Uh, y yes, with Office Mix, I'm not sure whether you can print them or not. But um, the other program I can think, uh, the other thing I was thinking of, it puzzle. I don't know if you guys heard of it puzzle. Basically, you can sit again. Yeah, similar. You can sit questions, but it's all done online base. Um, I'm not sure whether I can with the Office. Can, I'll, I'll find out later on whether you can print it out or not. Yes. Hi. Um, so in your, like, when you Uh, in this, in, uh, for the office quiz, as I know, you, uh, you cannot. It's like if you get a wrong answer, I'll show you guys an example. If you get a wrong answer, it will just say you got it wrong. Tried it again. Um, but there, uh, with Office Mix, there is an analytic button that you can click and check who has done it. But then there is a slight, this, uh, I'll, I'll show you the pros and cons of it. But um, you can do it with Office Mix if you want to do quiz because it does give you the ability to add quiz. But I would personally use like some other programs in combined with Office Mix, like potentially it puzzle is the one I'm thinking of. Um, and in Schoology, the system, we have a school, they, we do have a quiz system as well, which we can add onto it. Um, but I'll just quickly show you guys this video, it's 50 seconds. It just goes through about, material to study before coming to class, but then are expected to sit through a presentation that often covers similar content, and then assign something to do for homework, usually on their own. In a flipped class, students have access to the instructor's lectures ahead of time, along with any other background material that they need, which frees up face-to-face -face time to let students seek clarification from instructors, collaborate with peers, and practice applying concepts while getting guidance and feedback directly from experts in the moment when it can help the most. This lets students leave class with an even greater collection of resources and a clearer awareness of what they need to focus on to close any gaps that remain in their learning. For more yep. information, so that is just the summary of Flip Classroom. Uh, but personally, I, I only tried it once, and like someone said, um, it, you know, it, it, it depends whether you know, your students actually you know, engage and want to watch, or you can try to set up routines. Uh, but the way I do it is called blended classroom strategy. I don't, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it's basically a mix of digital and in-person learning experience. So uh, in our schools, we, um, well, we try, for our year nine and year 10, we try to get into the very digital side. They will always bring a device. But for the senior years, we have cows with like netbooks, and then they just watch. So I normally de uh, deliver my content within the class time. And the students can watch individually or they can watch collaboratively, it doesn't matter. But I will go around and you know, if they have any pro problems, I'll just help them out. And I will get on with my normal teaching again. Uh, but it's just some of the content is delivered through, yeah, through, you know, through mix of two things, um, the digital and the in-person experience. So students can watch a video independently or collaboratively and review their learning pro, uh, progress with the teachers. And obviously the video can provide a background information for the activities of the lesson. So um, I did one on uh, State of Matter for Year 9 Science. It's called um, How to Make Ublik. So actually my office mix is all about Ublik. And I actually sp spent time at home making Ublik. And I showed them and they're like, oh great, oh, well, I, I know how to make Ublik now. And they just get on with it, their, their task. And it's saved me time to just you know, talk about it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's blended strategy. Uh, unlike flip classroom, you actually introduce the videos within the class rather than before the class. 
Um, so those are the two, two ways to, uh, to deliver messages, to deliver videos. Um, now I'm just going to jump into Office Mix and um, I want to show you guys how it works. Um, so the requirement for Office, Mi Office Mix is Office 2013. Um, maybe some of you guys are on Office 2010, but I believe that uh, hopefully by next year at every school, should, well, your, your technician should have a copy of Office 2013 for you guys. If you guys are like a Microsoft school, which is like my school, you guys should have Office 365, which then offers you Office 2013 as an installation package. Uh, Office Mix is obviously free, so it's a free add-on. And also, you probably need a microphone. I um, I tried different microphone, and I end up buying one of these from Amazon. Um, it's really good. It's it's Yeti Blue, I believe. Uh, it's really good. The the, the bad thing is really, it's really big. Like when you're gonna carry this to school, it's like crazy. I mean, I carry this all the way from Auckland to Wellington. I'm just like, is that expensive? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, this is this is like a podcast. Like, I mean, if you guys watch YouTubers. Uh, they normally use something like this. Like it's, a, it's a sort of professional grade micro, uh, microphone. But the good thing is, you don't have to deal with any of the setting. You just plug in and it works like magical. Um, and it's, I think it costs about two, one, yeah, 150 NZ, I think, at the end when I, with all the shipping. So $150 for a microphone. But I just, I want to do this for a long run. So I just thought is instead. Is that not available in New Zealand? It is available in New Zealand, but uh, it's a bit more expensive. I just compare prices like oh Amazon oh uh, shipping oh uh, shipping adding shipping is fine um, optional depends on whether you want to add it or not touchscreen with a stylus so um, at home I don't have um, I don't have a touchscreen or anything like that so again I went to buy one of these Wacom tablet thing with a pen so I can actually do annotation which is another good thing about Office Mix I like to do annotations on my videos so it's more interactive um, if you have a tablet like a hybrid with like you know pen support that'll be fine for example something like a surface Pro, uh, surface from Microsoft so surface 3 or surface Pro anything with a pen you can just use it uh, so pen display again like this like what I have right here uh, webcam depends on whether you want to use you want to show your face or not if you want just a voice and annotation that is fine um, I didn't bring my webcam, but mine was is, is exactly the same as this. I bought one of these Logitech one for my home. Um, yeah, but if you use it on laptop, for example, you should have already a webcam that's faced you, so you can use that. Actually, you don't have to go and purchase another computer, uh, another webcam, for instance. Um, any quick? Yes, hi. There's no reason why you can't just use the built-in microphone. And yep. The, um, you can use the built-in microphone. Yep. 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 I mean, I just. I just go the extra miles and I just bought this stuff. But you can definitely use the built-in microphone building. Um, I've seen my other teachers, they just use this, like, um, they just use the Surface Pro 3. They just talk in front of the Surface Pro 3. And the good thing about it is that you, there's a pin display touch, so it, you can just annotate straight away rather than, you know, have another thing like right in here and look on the screen. Um, I'll explain my difficulty later on. Uh, but that's what you need for Office Mix. And now I'm just going to take you through how to actually get Office Mix to your computer, okay? So I'm going to go tell you guys how to download Office Mix, how to install, and how to access Office Mix from the Microsoft PowerPoint. I'll give you guys a description of each button. I'll show you my, my videos that I've already made. And um, you guys should already have a piece of paper that's printed out for you guys. But those are the hotkeys for recording, stop, change the ink color, and change the thickness of your stylus. And lastly, I'll show you guys how to actually delete recording and you know start it fresh for each of your PowerPoints. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna cool, cool. Okay, I'll move on. So the first thing you got to do is um, I'll log off first. Is go to mix.office.com. So I'm just gonna log off my. Um, that is the website. So mix.office.com. If you don't want to type it in and you just want to use Google, you can just go Office Mix, and it should be the very first link provided for you guys, okay? So Office Mix, and let's just go uh, mix.office.com, and all you have to do is sign in. So if you press a sign in on the top right, it will take you to the screen where it asks you to sign in. You can sign in with your Microsoft account, you can sign in with Facebook, with Google+, or with a, a, a work or school account. I personally sign into my own uh, Microsoft account. Yes, hi. Oh, that was my question because I looked at that this morning to see whether I should bring my own device with it. Yeah. Preloaded to play with while we were here. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a school account that logged into that. Yeah. I wasn't sure about logging in on my school machine with my personal Microsoft account because I wondered whether that would preclude me logging in on another device. How many devices can you log in with 
um, do you know? Have you loaded it on a school machine and a yep. home machine? Yeah. All with your same account. Yep. So I I actually use my personal Hotmail account. Um, I, I've, I've been provided with a school account that's worked with, uh, with Office, but uh, before that, I just use my personal account. Um, the thing is, as long as you log off, I, and, then, and as long I never keep this, I never tick this thing. I never keep the keep me sign in thing. I always leave it off. Technically, if you close the browser, it sh over time, your, your history should be, well, well, whatever you log onto, it should be logged out completely, like, automatically. If you're afraid with that, you just have to sign out. But I have load um, Office Mix on multiple devices. It's not just it's only on your one sign -up. Yeah. So, like for example, I made I made Office Mix at home, um, and I uploaded to Office Mix Cloud. I don't have to save it into a USB drive or a video. I can just go to school and into my you know Office Mix account, and I can access the videos from school. So it doesn't have to be a physical copy. It can. Whatever you do with this Office Mix, you can store in the cloud with Microsoft. But then again, that's you know, you you. It's kind of like a YouTube system. You sort of just you know, with with this Office Mix, you just upload your content to the storage of Microsoft. And yes, hi. Yeah, I can answer that because on my school, I have yep. a school machine with a school laptop. Yeah. But Office Mix asks you to um, sign in with your Gmail account. So I just signed into the Gmail account. Yep, and it works. And it, it doesn't work for me, so I have to get the help of my school IT person. Oh, okay. And he, the technician, IT technician, helped me to download from my um, Gmail account into my office of okay. school computer. Mm. Okay. okay. Um, because a lot of our school yeah. accounts now yeah. are just yeah. now is behind the scene. You know, they yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, so the, personal, if the office makes a demand that we want to um, download the Gmail account, but the school machine doesn't allow that. So yeah. the IT person from the school yeah. has to help me to get it. Um, I, I mean, if you do come to problem to download Office Mix, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you talk to the IT, yeah, like you said, yeah. the IT department there will help you out. I, I personally just use my, like, um, I can show you guys. I mean, um, if you guys, I made this account when I was in 2001. <laughs> Crazy, but 2001, yeah, it's not, nothing going to change. Uh, but yeah, I personally use my personal email account, and that's count as a Microsoft account. So like a Hotmail account, that is um, that. But if you do have problems, you know, log getting Office Mix, uh, your school IT people will be the best bit. Like you just say you want to have this thing installed and they will help you out. So once you log in, it will, tell, it will display your name and um, this is, um, there's a couple of tabs. I'll just quickly show you guys. Um, this is a thing called My Mixes and this is the stuff that when you upload your videos, this is where you can see all your videos. Okay, I'll come back to this later on. Uh, but basically these are all my videos. And for those of you guys that are worried about like privacy, for example, it, it does offer similar privacy like setting kind of like um, YouTube. So you can actually uh, decide how you want to share it. You can actually, it can be public. So that means anybody that has a, micro, a My Mixes account, they can see your video. Or it can just be something to do with like, um, you know, a link. So instead of like, you know, people can search it up. They, you just provide them the link. So um, I'm just going to show you guys. So detail, for example, uh, you can set permission. So for example, this is at the moment it's public, but you can change the permission and sharing. So unlisted is the one I normally use, which is um, anyone with the link can watch it, but that's it. Like you can't search it on, online or anything like that. Um, so I'll just leave it back there. And the link is obviously provided here. So all you have to do is, if you guys have any like Schoology or delivery system to the kids, you can just give them that link. And with Office Mix, as long as kids can view the link, they can view it with tablet, phone, uh, desktop, anywhere. Okay, as long as it supports video functions. Um, so these are my uh, my videos, and there's another uh, tab I'll just quickly show you guys. It's called Gallery. So this is the part where whoever makes um, office Mix want to share online. This is a place where they can display it. So you can see all these are made from different people. It can be educator. It can be um, anyone that just want to make a video out of it from PowerPoint. Okay. So um, you can actually search anything that's quite exciting. I mean, I think I watched this Orm's Law, um, and you can just basically click it, and you can watch all their contents. Like, what do they talk about? For instance. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so I'll, oh, yes, hi. So those ones that are on there, are they, they're public? Yeah, they're public. Okay. 
Yeah, those are the public ones. Yep. Um, I'll come back to this function later, but I'll, I just want to quickly show you guys how Office Mix works. Do students have to log into Office Mix to, to see it? Ah, uh, good questions. Uh, no, they don't have to. They don't have to. But if they, if you set up a quiz and you want to do the quiz, I'll show you later on. Um, if they don't log on and do the quiz, their uh, their results will show up as anonymous. So they just do it as a guess sort of thing. If they do log on with their account, and if your school is a Microsoft school which provides them Microsoft accounts, uh, when they do the quizzes on, on Office Mix and when you look at the results, it will display their name because they are logged into the Microsoft system. But if they don't log in, they still can do the quiz, they're still, they're still doing the learning, but uh, you know whatever result they, they achieve, they have to either tell you or unless when you look at Office Mix, like your, your detail, the analytics section, it will just say anonymous did this t quiz yesterday at 10 p.m. and that's a result. But you don't know who did it. That's, a, that's one of the problems. Yes, hi. If we're not a um, Microsoft school, but the students all have Gmail, and they just log in with the Gmail? I, that, and, I, I, and it will show through as their name or something? Like that, or I would, yeah, whatever the name they set up for Gmail. I mean, I never, I, I probably should try, but there is a part say sign in with Google. Yeah, so so I would assume you can do it with the Gmail account, but then there's, you know, there, there are all problems over that site. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't tried it before myself. I just signed in with the Microsoft account. But I guess if you sign in with a Google account and they do have like the profile for their Gmail, then I think that will show up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, any, any more questions before? I, okay, cool, so I'll, I'll leave this there. Uh, I'll log in back later. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys what Office Mix looks like. Um, so actually, before I go any further, um, so the minute you log on, uh, you can download Office Mix, and I'll just quickly show you guys. So you can just click Get Office Mix, and it will say, Office Mix made on for Microsoft PowerPoint 2013, um, and this should provide you um, a button. I don't know whether, hmm, I don't know why it doesn't provide me the button. It's, uh, it's probably already download, yeah, so I can't do anything about it. But it should, give, it should then have an installation link and you can just download this package. And what it will look like, it will be look something like, uh, if I can show my desktop, um, it will show something like Office Mix Setup. And you just double click and if you don't have PowerPoint 2013, it will just say you do not have the requirements to, to install Office Mix and you were not able to install it, okay? Uh, but if you have Office 2013, or, I mean PowerPoint 2013, it will just automatically install it as successful. How would you see it? So for example, if I go to File and I go to New and I just open up a presentation, you should have a new tab called Mix and there, that's it. It will add on automatically to one of the tab for PowerPoint, okay? You don't have to trick, you don't have to go to anywhere to trigger the, the add-on, it will just automatically stay there, okay? Now, I'm just gonna go through a couple of things. So I'm gonna create new, and I'm gonna go for blank, okay? Now, if you have a, type, a pin interface, um, as long as you put your pin on the, on the screen, it should automatically pop up this um, ink tool called pin, and you can actually click it, and you can actually select whatever things you want to do. So you can actually go and you can just type or you know write stuff. Uh, and this can be triggered in Office Mix, okay? So this can be triggered in Office Mix. And I'm just gonna go back to the Mix file to show you guys. There we go. Um, so the basics is slide recording. If you click this, it will take you to a screen where it will prepare you for the recording session, okay? And the cool thing about this is that you can select whether you want to have no camera or you want to have a camera. So for example, I have a FaceTime camera for my Mac. I trigger it, it will ultimately show me up. And I can see, I can look at myself and go, oh yeah, oh, I look fine. Or, you know, I don't want to have a camera and I'll just, I'll, I'll go no camera, right? Uh, you can also select the microphone. So you can select built-in microphone. If you have an external microphone, then you have to select the source elsewhere, okay? And down here you have different, um, different ink. So you can have fine, uh, medium or uh, thick pen. If you want to swap on the fly, and that's why I give you guys the shortcut, is that you just press, uh, for example, for fine pen, you press F2. It will change from whatever your pen thickness to fine straight away. If you want to go medium back again, you go F3. And if you want thick, you can F4. And you obviously have the function of rubbing things off. Uh, one of the problem with the, the, the eraser is that it will rub 
like the line off. So if you draw like one long line and you actually just want to erase half of it, uh, Office Mix can't do that. It will just erase the whole line. Okay, so uh, I, I don't normally use the eraser function, but it, it's up to you guys whether you guys want to use it or not. And you can obviously choose different types of inks. So there are different colors, and each of these colors is also bind to a particular key. Um, and so for example, purple is four. So if I select four, then it will change from whatever color I have before into purple, okay? Now, the cool thing about um, Office Mix is that you can activate slide notes. What does it mean by slide notes? So um, if you guys use Office Mix, um, or people familiar with Office Mix, you have something called click to add notes at the bottom of each, each slide. You can actually type your script in there. So for example, I'll show you one of my video, if I can, uh, Office Mix, so energy and food. So I can actually type whatever I want to say at the bottom of it. And what you do is that when I say click mix and I go to slide recording, and it should show it up. Um, uh, so hopefully there's no notes here. There is notes. So whatever I type there, it will automatically show up there. The minute I press record, your wording will still stay there. So if I press record, um, it will jump into a record section and your, note, your notes are still over there. So you can actually just say whatever you type there while you're recording, okay? Um, I'm just going to stop this. And I'm going to... Yep, so that's your script. So um, in re really, with the PowerPoint Office Mix, you can treat each, each slide as a scene. So you can write your script for each scene as you go along. So which, what, how you want, you, you, you know, you can do it on your existing PowerPoint, but you might have to reorder it or maybe make it more, you know, just in terms of this, the, the scene, how you want to approach your subjects, okay? So that's a good thing about Office Mix. Like, initially, like, I think before the beta, like alpha, they didn't have this option. <laughs> so I had to actually print out, like, a script, and I had to actually place it by my screen and look in the camera look at the script and look at the camera. Uh, but if you place your camera right on top of where that script shows up, it looks like you're just talking to a tele, is it telegram? Or the, you know, like, kind of like the news. Yeah, kind of like, you know, just, uh, it looks like you're focused to the, the screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is that. Um, so I'll just quickly show you guys. So slide recording, when you go in and you, you got everything ready, and you just want to go, I want to record, okay? So you just have to press this record button. Uh, the short key is F9. So I don't normally press it because I just go F9 and I start talking, okay? So the minute you press F9, this is your, your, your recording session. So right now it is recording. And you can do whatever you want on the annotation. If you have animations, you can click animation. So for example, uh, these things on the top of the start, you can jump into the next animation if you want to. So for example, your car is stationary and you say, oh, imagine this car is speeding up or accelerating, and you press an animation button, and if you, don't, if you know how to make animation in PowerPoint, you can see the car moving, and you can continue describing what you want to do with your content. Yes, hi. Um, I'll be making PowerPoint, uh, right now with PowerPoint, so just putting um, little clips in for this. Yep. Um, so I presume you can just do the same as that, where you clip the same. Ah, um, uh, yeah, this is the thing I've been trying, and they still haven't fixed it. Um, if you uh, upload a video, yeah. you cannot annotate with the video. Oh, no, yeah. You can, you, you, I, I just don't know why. If I upload a video on there and I press the record button, and you know how there usually should be a play button in the bottom of the, 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 the video that you play? Yeah. That button doesn't work. Oh, it just, so it but I can give you an alternative way to do it, but it's, uh, it's not as good as just you know, upload videos and talk about it. I'll, I'll show you later on just how you do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, this is still beta. It's not fully out yet. And I think you can communicate with the developer I, on their website and say, hey, this is the function I really want. And it really helps me as an educator. I think the best thing will be is that if you can just press play on the inserted video and you can annotate next to it, that'll be like the perfect thing. But at the moment, that, I, I, that function still doesn't work. I actually tried last time. I was just like, I better make sure that this works, but um, it doesn't. Um, I don't know if you guys have been to the Camtasia one, but Camtasia one allows you to do that because it, it, it is literally just screen capture the, pr the presentation that you can do, you can talk while you do. But I'll show you guys, I'll show you something similar. Because that. the old PowerPoint, you can just the Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that part. Uh, but with Office, uh, with Office or PowerPoint in general, you can insert GIF. I don't know, GIF. If you guys know, just like a little animation, like bunch of pictures, staircase of pictures, you can actually record that on Office Mix. Uh, but then I'll show you guys another slight problem that you might have with that. Uh, but basically, once this is happening, you can do whatever you want. You can, for example, start writing stuff, and you go like, oh yeah, this is photosynthesis, and you do high underline, highlight. You can rub it off if you want. Uh, depends on your support. Uh, with the surface, I think the back, as long as you turn it to the back, it will become a razor like the Microsoft Surface, you can just go there and just like rub stuff off. Uh, but you can do any annotations you want, you can talk about your slides, you can go next uh, you know, to your animations for examples. I'll show you guys quickly what it will look like. But just before I go, um, if you want to stop, you can press F10 or you can just press the stop button. And there you go. If you always have the camera on, it will always show your pictures on the top left hand side. You can adjust that later. Uh, but if you, for example, you're not very happy, you want to have a look what it looks like, you can press the preview slide recording. So the minute so, you press F9, uh, this, is this is just what I just did before. Right now it is recording. Yeah. And you can do whatever you want on the annotation. If you have animations. Yeah. And your annotation will be live. So whatever you're talking, uh, these things that animate the, well, the, 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 the anything will just show up. So for example, you are okay? stationary, you can change the image like, like, say you're like in chemistry of drawing structure and like, just want to do it real quick. Can you speed up that part? Good questions. Uh, this is one of the problems, uh, again, this is another problem I, 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 I sort of, as I stumble across Office Mix, is that there's a lot of downtime if you want to do annotations. For example, you just, this is, this is the inner side of Coropass, and you, like, you start writing inner side of Coropass, and then it, it, there's a lot of downtime. So what you can technically do, um, unfortunately there's no function to speed up. I think you can, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know whether it's a way to speed up or not. The one way I do it is that I would do the annotation beforehand. Uh, so if my inks works, uh, just select. So I'll write something out and I will, I will choose this. I'll use this as animation. So as like, so for example, that's my writing. I'm gonna use the fade animation. And when I do my mix, so when I start recording on the office mix, I will be like explaining stuff and I'll be like, this is the inner side of, of Coropass and I have the word Coropass and I press for the next animation. And it will show up as a little animation, but it is your handwritten stuff. So it's more personal rather than just you type it out and you make that, you know, the, that sentence box as your you know, animations. I will actually pre-type it, I will insert it, make my, all, all my animations correct and I'll just click next animations as I record it, and it looks like I just instantly wrote it, and you don't have that downtime at all. That's one of the ways to solve that. But uh, after trying out Surface Pro 3 from another teacher, it is really quick. Like if you have a, a, a you know a display that you can do writing straight on, it's actually really quick because it's actually really I don't know, it's just intuitive. It just and write it, and it can write really quick. But with something like this. When I have to look on the screen and then I have to look on this, it does take a while to get used to it, and there, there is a downtime when you do that, okay? Uh, the any? Thing is that yeah. Office 365 is developing all the time, and they just, see, they just create updates. They don't tell you, they don't upload them. Yes. Um, stuff's getting better all the time. My school is a Microsoft, well, I, I think we're going towards more the Microsoft side, but that is one of the flaw I see with Microsoft. They, a lot of time they update something, they don't tell you, and you just go and go, oh hey, I didn't notice such a thing. Oh okay, no, 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 nobody sees anything. Like, they, they don't make, they, they, they do have a blog that they, they blog about it, but it, unless you check like regularly, you wouldn't know that it's updated. For, for instance, I didn't know Office Mix was updated a couple of days ago until my HOD told me, hey, did you update your Office Mix? Like, oh, there's an update. I better go download it again and install the update. But if you use Office Mix through Office yep. rather than through the website, it updates automatically. Oh, update automatically? Oh, okay, I, I, I don't get the automatic update. But yeah, I, I guess it will just update automatically. So yeah. It doesn't bother me actually, but we're in Office School as well. I'm completely in Office. I don't yeah. function outside of it. Yeah. Um, just quickly, so for example, if, you, if you're not happy with your recording for each slide, unfortunately there's no way to edit the part that you don't want. 
you have to actually re-record re that slide. Uh, you do not have to go say delete slide recording. Uh, and please watch out for the delete all recording because that, that will delete all your recording for all your slides. Like, gone. Like, I think you can undo it, but you don't want to do that. You can delete slide, uh, slide recording. Or if you just record again, so I'm just recording again and I stop, it will give you a little pop-up message that says, uh, reporting, would you like to overwrite your previous one? And if you think your second time is crappier than the first time, then you might as well just press skip. <laughs> or, okay, you just, you, you know, and you just press skip. Um, if you just want to delete it, you can just delete slide recording. But I'm just going to quickly show you guys, um, if I close this, yes, hi. Touchpad pen over there to present something on the slide. So uh, like the writing. Yeah. So what is the other option if you don't have that? You can use it. You can use a mouse. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to do something here, but it's yeah. not working. Um, I'll. Oh, I'll is that in your... Yeah, you have to go to slide recording, like, and then yeah. go press record. Yeah. If you press record and you select whatever color, so for example, I'm using my trackpad. You press the right, the left hand button. Sorry, oh, oh, you got it? Oh. Okay, yeah. Uh, the reason I don't use mouse is because it's not very um, accurate. So you can do it with typing. Uh, you, uh, if you want to do a typing, I would say do it as an animation. So the word will just pop up, for example, rather than, yeah. Uh, but you cannot, yeah. Unfortunately, you cannot type while you're recording. That's, it's only writing is possible. So can you take an existing PowerPoint that's typed, that's got graphics, that's got the graphics that animate and arrive on click, can you take that yeah. and voice over? You can. So you can voice over if you want. Yep. So uh, that's, a, that's a good thing about Office Mix. If you, well, I mean, if you use PowerPoints a lot of times, you can actually grab like you know, two or three years old PowerPoint that you always use. You put it in. Uh, you might have to change the format of it because with 2013, there's instead of .ppt the file, it's called .pptx. You can just convert it, and you can actually voice over, and you can just send it away. Cool. Um, any more questions before I move on? No. Uh, so just jumping back, you can actually adjust where you want your recording to be. So if you do want to show your face, you can minimize it. You can bigger if you want. You can or whatever you want depending on where you want it. Um, another cool thing about Office Mix is that, for example, I type out the word chloropass. Um, so for example, I'll just show you guys quickly. So I go to home and photosynthesis probably. Photo and for example like that. And let's just say I added two, I added three eyes like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna enlarge it. Okay, and on my mix, I just go record, and you record it, and you go blah, 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 talk, 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 and then you press stop, and when you go view it again, you go, oh crap, I have photos with so many eyes, I'm just gonna overwrite it. Uh, what you can do is you can actually close this, change it up, and that's it. You don't have to re-record again. So if I go preview, Record it, and you go, oh, it will be like the stuff I talked about, but the information is completely updated. So you can do a little fix like that. Uh, with animations, you can also do it, but it just means, so for example, I have an animation, I, the minute I press click, it will show up something, and it's recorded. If you delete that animation, and you pre preview it again, you still will make that click sound, but well, like, you, know, you know that you made a click, but nothing will pop up. Okay, so it might be a bit discon disjointed if that animation is really important or is a part of your script, like, you know, you show it up. Uh, so you can do it with animations, you can do it with any content. So for example, you upload your video up to students and students say, hey, there's a bit of a mistake or, you know, you want to improve on it. You can even add an extra slide in between your, 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 your videos and you just have to re-upload the mix and it will update on, online digitally. Um, so that is, that is the basics of Office Mix. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you guys, uh, for example, the video problems. Um, so I'm going to just open up YouTube. Um, so in, oh, sorry. in Office Mix, there's a part that says screen recording, okay? So you can technically screen record whatever it is on. So for example, I want to play this video. 
And so this is a vegetation video I want to show them. Um, I can just press the screen recording. And in this part, you can either screen record the whole screen, or you can just select the video that you want to screen record. You can also select audio, so you can actually talk or voice over while you watch the video, but there's no part of doing the annotation. Okay, so for examples, I want to uh, I want to screen over this side, so I just highlight this box, and that's it. And all I have to do is press record. You can decide whether you want to have audio or not, depending. Um, this I don't know why it doesn't show up, but you can decide whether you want audio or not, and you just press record, and it will say three, two, one, and whatever you do now is recorded, <laughs> and you can down. voice over it. Yeah, we'll just I'll just stop that, and you can just press. Do you guys actually want to watch the end of it? Because it's actually quite funny. And there you go, Asian tourists. I mean, yeah. um, now anyway, um, moving on. So you can just actually press uh, pause, or you can stop. I mean, at the moment, I'm just going to pause this. Yeah. Um, can you, do you can put video in. You can put video in, but it's not like you know how in PowerPoint you can like uh, there's a function I'll show you quickly. What it means is you can't. Um, it. You know how there's an insert video. So under the insert tab, you can go to insert video. If you insert a video there and you want to do a mix and you want to you press the record button, yeah. you you still can record it, but it's just you can't press play on the video. Yeah. It's I don't know why. It, right. I I think there's something I probably have to. If I have an opportunity to email them and if I have time. Uh, but right now, whatever you screen capture will be there and you can just play. And it should, um, I tried it last night, it should, your voice should sh show up. But um, at the moment, because I'm using Mac, this is actually a virtual machine. It, it's probably better if you do it on the actual Windows <laughs> computer. This is a slightly laggy bit. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. And if you want, you can actually make the video uh, the spec. So you don't have to do, if you just want to show a video. So uh, you no longer need to actually just find a video, upload it into PowerPoint. You can just screen capture whatever you find online and just show that. That's cool, so you can edit. You don't need to show the whole video. You, can just you don't have to, yep. You can just, you know, whatever part you want, you can just say, oh, I want to start from here to here of the documentary. I screen record, I screen capture that. That's it, and I'm going to put it on my PowerPoint and I just, it's going to be part of my slide or something. Okay. Hi. So just to clear off the white line, now if you go back to your Mac's recording screen, yeah. so you can talk about photos of the system. Yeah. Guards, I'll show you. Yep. Um sorry, just loading. So you see how there's a that's a screen of your recording. If I oh sorry, you can't press the record button. The record button doesn't show up. So I can actually record for this slide. It's not, yeah, it's not, not the other way around. Not like say you can repress record and you can't. You can actually record the whole thing. This whole slide will not be recordable because of the video. Oh, now I have it. Yeah, uh, I, mm, I didn't try that. Let me, let me see. If, so if I press preview. Oh, hold on, not that, not that preview. Um, yeah, hold on. Actually, it's I just go to. When you play the mix, that's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah so you I can't even. Yeah. In your last animation, yeah. The guard walking down. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, so yeah, you mean like you do the talk and then you. Pre you yeah, so your video is moving. Yeah, uh, at the moment I can't preview it at all. It just it doesn't allow me to preview it. Is that we found some error in slide one? Can you add an animation to that so that it can come in on click? Uh. A, a video click? The video? Yeah, select the video, yep. animate it, and then do a mix. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it does play, but I mean, I can't actually play my mix at the same time. Like, if you see, it just says there's an error. So, I, I know what you mean. So, I have a pre existing recorded, and then, and then I add my video onto it. So your video would have to be, your YouTube video would have to be another slide. Yeah, it has to be another slide right? underneath it, yeah. So you, if, you might have to yeah. break one slide into two if you wanted to insert yeah. during a bit of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So 
So you can probably like talk about it. You go, this is called pause, and now I'm going to show you guys a video, and then, then you cut into the next slide with your video on it, and then you play the video. But you cannot do a live annotation of that video on the same time. Although you could go right and this much of the video, and then you can have another slide later on, and that would just sort of cover that. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. If you really want to annotate the video, uh, SmartBoard has software where you can play it through there. You can use the pen and annotate the video, and then you'd be able to import that video into your PowerPoint if you really want to annotate the video. Which Oh, okay. Yeah, so like a... Ex oh, no, you don't need a smartphone to have the smartphone software. I'm pretty sure there must be a... Yeah, there must be another program that you can do. But as long as you upload it as a video, I think... Yeah, well, hi. Um, turn down the, the, the volume on your meter. Of the video, when you embed it. Uh, and talk over it. No, I do not believe there is a function for that. Uh, let me just double check for you. So at the moment, you can. But you can turn the volume down and have none. You can turn it, the volume down when you capture it. Yeah. So it has no volume. Yeah. When you embed it into your slide, then you can talk over it. Yeah. The the thing is, the record button doesn't work. You can't re you can't print like for for instance at the moment, if I go to mix yeah. and I go to slide recording, yeah. um, the record button will stay faded grey. Yeah. I can't click it. Yeah. I mean, so it'll be it good as it. So yeah. it only shows the video. Yeah, it only shows the video, then you probably talk about it at the end. But, okay. yeah, yeah, on the so other I can slide. Talk at the beginning, yeah. Like at the end, but yeah. Not during yeah, the during the video. Unless, unless during your screen recording, you, you obviously allow audio. So, you, yeah, you turn off the, 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 the volume of the YouTube video, you can talk about it, and you just embed it as a. A video that you screen while captured, you're yeah. While, while you're, screen while you're yeah, screen yeah. That's but that the other problem is that there's no annotation. You can't do. I'm not worried about the yeah. Okay. Yeah. I find a really good video, but I don't like the explanation. Yeah. On my own, or I want to highlight different points, and I can do it. Yeah. Turn the volume down. Yeah. Screen capture, talk over it. Yeah. And then you can do it. Yeah. 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 Now, um, before you guys go, so I'll just, we only got 10 minutes, I just really want to uh, summarize this up. Uh, this is what I talk about iron. This is a little summary I did for my kids. Um, I'm just going to show you guys what happens when you have a GIF. So, for example, I'm going to press record, and I'm going to go to my next animation, and this is a GIF. So you can actually show GIF, and the GIF will actually work. Like, it will just, this is the sodium with water. It does work, and normally works on the first time round. However, if I press stop recording, and I'm just going to go skip, and I record again, sometimes the GIF doesn't start from the beginning. Like, if I press record again, well, in this case, it does start, but sometimes, <laughs> it just doesn't show. But sometimes when I record it, and I press my, 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 my animation button, and then it shows up, and I'm like, oh, wait, it's not the start of the, 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 the videos I want, or the, the animation I want to show, and I'm like, oh, okay, I have to do it again. But this one's a very short one, and you can actually talk over um, GIF if you guys, you guys know what, is that how you call it, GIF? I, yeah. Sounds really weird. Um, yeah, and you can just go through it, and go through your animations, and you talk, 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 and you stop, and you just, you know, you press F10, you have it, if you're happy with it, you can just press yes, or you can skip. Uh, now, the other thing is you can actually record your face full on, so you can actually go to on full screen, and you can also go to the setting button on top there, and you can actually record an HD video if you want to do HD videos, okay? Um, and so that is that. Um, flip the camera around and show a practical. Yep, flip the camera around, show a practical if you want to do that. Um, so the, the, that's pretty much the functions of um, Office Mix. Now, just before you guys go, I just want to quickly show you guys a couple of things and probably summarize what I do uh, at the end. Um, when you go to the mix button, you can actually um, upload, you can preview, and you can upload your mix, okay? So if you upload your mix, basically what happened is that it will connect to, uh, clear slide, I'm just gonna go next. It will upload to your Microsoft, oh, the, the Office mix thing that you just, use okay you know how you uh, how you download office mix again now you can sign in whichever way you want and it will just prepare the video and what will happen is something like this will show up and I'll just quickly show you guys before you guys go 
Um, office mix. My mixes. In your mixes, you will see all the videos that you uploaded. If I click this one, it will show you your whole video. Now, the cool thing about this is that if the students access it, I'm just going to press it. Um, it's going to load a bit. Um, it's going to talk. So um, some of these clips that you see here, I, I, I bought myself a GoPro. I just film it and I, just, I do a little bit of editing and then I and upload it. some foods are healthier than others? So I'll show you the actual video. This is going to be lag out. But if the student just want to see a certain portion of your mix, they can. They can go to table of content and they can select which slide they want to do. So they don't have to watch from the beginning. They can go, oh, I saw the bit of it up to slide six. I want to continue with slide seven. I'll just click slide seven. And your, and your video will just start from slide seven onward. Okay? In fact, you can even upload your PowerPoint to them. If you really, you know, they can just watch it within PowerPoint, really. Uh, but that's what a table content is. Um, it's really laggy. I think that there's not enough bandwidth. Uh, but I'll just quickly show you guys. If I go to analytic and so, for example, cellular respiration, um, the thing I said, you can actually see how many views. I actually didn't use much of the office mix. Uh, what I just actually given the video like on YouTube and on like a link. But quizzes, you can actually see um, who did what. Uh, for example, if I press more, you can see I, I tried it. And, but if someone didn't log in, it will show as anonymous user and it will show you the stat, but you don't know who did it unless they log in. Uh, and just quickly, because we're running out of time, sorry guys. Um, if you want to add quizzes, really simple. Um, just go to mix and go to quizzes and video apps. And you press it, and it will load up. Uh, Microsoft has their own one, so free response, multiple choice, multiple uh, response poll, true or false. If I want to add a multiple choice, I just press add and I go trust it and I can add it on there. And you can just type whatever you want. You can select allow multiple choice, shuffle answers, allow retry or limit outcome. And you can add multiple answer to it. Uh, there are other functions on this um, app, Office Video Quizzes. Um, underneath, you, there's actually videos and apps. So I haven't tried it, but if you guys have time, you guys can always it's go on. Fit. Sorry, yeah. can I interrupt there? Sorry. Yeah. Blame the self-promotion. The fit animation is amazing. Go! Cool. Should, should, should I prick it? There's um, a whole lot of tutorials on how to embed them. Okay, let's. Fit. This one? Okay, so I think it just shows up like this, possibly. No, no, you click on, you click on the animation that you want. Oh, and then, and then it will. Oh, okay. Okay, when great. You do your mix, again, you can't record over it because it's the app inside. Yeah. Like the, like yeah. the screencast, but yeah. you get a little dot and the students can do the. It saves them oh. going to into, uh, into websites they shouldn't. Cool. Thank you for that. I never, I, I always see that, but I just, I never click it. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna finish off my um, presentation. Sorry, guys. Um, now, so the advantage of with, with Office Mix is you can share your mix with the globe. So if you share with cloud, uh, on the cloud, convert mix with videos. There is a button you can convert it into a video source and you can upload to uh, YouTube. There's no button to upload YouTube, I don't know why. You can edit slide after recording is done and you can annot do annotation and insert GIF diagrams, okay? Um, so what is Office Mix useful for me as a teacher? Uh, for me, honestly, the joy after complete, I think my first video took me four weeks because I had a lot of, um, I actually did a little interview with my, like, my physio, uh, my, uh, gym instructor because we want to talk about what cardio is. So it is awesome once you finish it. Uh, the, the feedback you receive from teachers and students is awesome because they give you an instant feedback. You can actually just after the video you can say, what do you think of it? They can tell you. The first response I got was, my video was too long. I had a 15 minutes video and they go, no, it's too long. But after like two minutes, I just like, I don't want to watch it. So I start trying to limit my videos to five minutes or less or I try to cut down the, 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 the content. And this gives me a, a bit of reflections on how to actually deliver my content as a teacher. Like, how do I do it digitally and what is considered to be important f during that five minutes, okay? So there's a reflection, there's a learning understanding. And obviously, what's next? Because you can always keep on creating more mixes and the cycle continues, okay? So for me, to, obviously, it's a reflection 
for me. Uh, the delivery, I understand what is actually count as important content for them and what, what they're confused with. And I guess it's a pursuit of innovation. I always, um, apart from the mix, I try to add a lot of like videos that I make and I just insert it onto Mix. So Mix is a good platform that you can just insert whatever into it and make a great video out of it, okay? Uh, student feedback, um, I, don't, I don't think this really makes sense. This is, I like how you use diagrams and videos of your face explaining everything. Uh, great layout of content. I like how easy it was to understand because you didn't talk too fast. I tend to talk really fast when I'm nervous. Um, it was very uh, descriptive, informative. Your video is kawaii, it just means uh, cute in Japanese. And this guy just said beautiful face. <laughs> beautiful face, I mean, I don't normally get that. I mean, Kim Jong-un, I don't, yeah, okay. Um, so the journey continues for me. Um, what's next? Um, I want to actually include more activities. This is the part I learned from my latest mix, is from Dora the Explorer and Blue's Clues. You can actually pause your mix. You can give out the questions and say, now, you can pause the video and do the questions, and when you continue the video, on the next slide, when I, I will go through the answers. So this is the next one I want to try. I actually want to start doing the year 12 questioning. I want to see, I want to give them examples of NCA questions and I'll break it down for them. And I'll give another slide and say, here's another NCA question, you know, NCA type questions. Can you break it down? Pause the videos. Once you break it down, play the video again and I will explain and I'll go through my breakdown and you, the students can actually do their own, you know, like, go, oh yeah, I did, I did that, Ooh, I didn't do that. Or, you know, kind of like an interactive thing. Make it more personal. Um, combined with other ICT application, our school is really into the OneNote and so I might start getting into that. It puzzle, um, I, just re I just discovered recently, I think it's really good. So if you upload as a YouTube for your video, you can actually add questions to it and then students can answer it. So instead of using the Microsoft Office quiz, you can use that. And obviously teach students how to use Office Mix. It is a very simple program and I think if your school is going toward the digital side, possibly they can you know, record their own mixes, make their own videos as a group and bring the learning back to the students. Um, lastly, acknowledgement, C. Martins, my HOD, my mentor, uh, Janice Wright, my specialized teacher, she, uh, she observed my uh, teaching, uh, Kissy Kirwater, my Vile HOD, and Ruby, just my colleague, she helped me a lot, and obviously Howard College. Without Howard College, I can't spend all these, well, I spend my personal time to it, but at, at least they support me in it, and obviously students, and that is it. Um, if you guys look at the, 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 cut, the shortcut I gave you, I have all my mixes there. Go and have a look. If you have any kind of questions, contact me. I'm more than happy to share. And thank you so much, guys. Well, thanks. Thank you very much for that, Stanley. That was really interesting. Oh. Here's a, uh, a token. Oh, thank thanks you. Thanks from um, the Psycon Chem Ed uh, okay. Committee. Um, what impressed me the most was how much stuff was being done by a second year teacher. So well done on that. Because thank uh, you. I remember second year being. Um, Pretty busy, so it's yeah. really impressive. Yeah. Keep it okay. up. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you.